uh, in one word, we do not allow answers from the audience during the quiz. We have to throw the question out and give them another. It doesn't help. Uh, don't forget the shout of Groucho at the beginning of the show. You are now pretty well instructed, except we would like you to stay for about 15 seconds after the show. We'll then turn these uh, quite bright lights around, take your picture, and you can uh, then stare at yourself when the show is finally released. The duck or Fenneman? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is wall. W-A-L-L. -L. Really? You bet your life! <laughs> it's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who now have on display the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> Well, here I am again with $2,500 tonight for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, uh, Josephine here will fly down and pay him 100 bucks. The word tonight is uh, wall. Okay, Ducky. See you around Lincoln's birthday. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to tie one on tomorrow night. I understand he's got a rich goose in town keeping him. <laughs> Married Betty Hutton today. Not Betty Hutton. What's her name? Uh, Ina Ray Hutton. <laughs> Somebody by the name of Hutton. Barbara. Barbara Hutton, yeah. Groucho, we have some people with very interesting... Would you marry Barbara Hutton? She's got 60 million now. I have three children. <laughs> well, that would give 20 million to each child. <laughs> Not only that, she'd probably give you a 10 cent store for yourself. Sounds nice. You could sing a million dollar baby. Well, it's an idea. Think about it. This is only a fifth. She'd probably have another one, and you may be next in line. Sleep on it. I will. Well, well. <laughs> Roger, we, uh, we have some people with uh, interesting occupations for you right now. Miss Josephine Shaker and Mr. Dan Kennedy, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Mr. Dan Kennedy and Miss Josephine Shaker. Miss Shaker, what kind of a shaker are you, salt or pepper? I'm a pepper shaker. A pepper shaker? Yes. Oh, a hot shaker, huh? Where are you from, Josie? I'm from Lebanon. Lebanon, Pennsylvania? No, Lebanon, Syria. Oh, Syria. Is uh, Shaker a, a Syrian name? No, it's Shaker, but it's called Shaker in English. Well, any Shaker is a Shaker in our country, uh, <laughs> Josie. What uh, kind of a... What, what does that come from, that name? Do you know? Does it have any derivation that you yes. could explain? Most of uh, my family are blonde, except me. Oh. And uh, you shocked them by turning up as a brunette? Looks like it. Oh. Well, uh, shake, huh? I'll be glad to put it there, Joe. Huh? You know, would you like a cigar? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're pretty lucky. I've only got this one, and you're lucky not to get this. This thing will explode any minute. Now, uh, Mr. Kennedy? Is that That's you? right, Dan Your Kennedy. Your first name is Dan, huh? Yes, Where sir. are you from, Dan? I'm originally from Chicago, from the Windy City. Windy City, huh? Yes, Were you here a couple of nights ago? Huh? <laughs> I was close to here. <laughs> you know, it blew the veranda up somebody's house up here in Beverly Glen. Imagine well, if that happened to Romeo and Juliet. Where they be? <laughs> are, you, are you married? Yes, I am. You are. Huh? You are, are you happy? Yes. Well, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> True or false, though it may be. Huh? <laughs> I'd like to get a look at this charmer. Is, uh, is she around here? Would Mrs. Kennedy please stand up? Is she in the audience? Would you mind standing up, Mrs. Kennedy? Let's take a gander at you. We have a duck, and we could use a gander. No, Mrs. Where is Mrs. Kennedy? Oh, she's down in San Diego. <laughs> the 
you're here in Hollywood having a hot time and she's, she's in San Diego, huh? No wonder you're grinning the way you are. <laughs> What's your wife doing in San Diego? Is she hiding out? Well, that's where her home is down there. Oh. And where do you live? <laughs> well, my work keeps me away from home most of the time. Did you deliberately look for that kind of a job? <laughs> Folks, no, meet no. a man who loves his work. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? I'm a census enumerator. A census enumerator? That's a soft job. You only work uh, once every ten years, isn't that true? No, we work a lot of times in between, too. Oh. Well, tell us about your job, Dan. Do you work for Washington? No, uh, we work for the separate cities that ask for special census to be taken in their town. You mean you're in business for yourself? Pretty much so. Uh -huh. uh, that's highly competitive with the government, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's it's... free enterprise, huh? Yes, it's still free enterprise. How often do you take these special uh, censuses? By the way, is that the correct way to... Is it censuses? Is that the plural of uh, census? Well, I don't know. You, uh, you don't say cactuses, you say cacti. That's when you're counting bullfrogs in the desert or something. <laughs> well, who decides when they want to take one of these special cacti? Uh, I was cacti the other night, huh? Uh, sensei, then. Sensei what? Instead of uh, cacti, it's sensei. Well, sensei uh, counted the cacti? Is that what it is? <laughs> you know, we can be sued by a number of comedians for this kind of a routine. <laughs> well, who decides to take the special cacti? Well, city officials, city councilmen, uh, city managers, city administrators in the different towns, they're the ones that uh, ask for a special census to be taken in their town. I guess that follows. Eh? The city fathers want to see how many strangers have sneaked into their family. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the special uh, census that you've taken? Well, I've taken them in... Uh, well, we've called it census. I've enumerated in San Diego, in uh, Chula Vista, Los Angeles, in Palm Springs, Monterey... What do you, do you count them just in the pools in Palm Springs? Or? We counted the pools also down there. And then you divide by four? Is that the way you count? <laughs> or multiply by four, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Suppose a pool has only got three people in. What do you do? Do you go to another city? <laughs> well, look for more people in the bottom, maybe, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> you drag the bottom, huh? <laughs> now, what do you find in San Diego, for example, besides people? What did you find down there? San Diego? Yeah. Well, uh, noticeably, they had a big population increase. They increased uh, about 40% in the last three years there. Really? I bet those city fathers could scarcely believe their own census. Huh? <laughs> what did you find out about L.A.? Was the increase as large as San Diego? Well, I understand they only had about an 8% increase uh, in the last three years in Los Angeles. Oh. I guess the traffic is so heavy here, people can't get home. <laughs> get lost on one of those freeways and they get frantic. <laughs> I know one guy's trying to get to Pasadena for the last four years. He's lost. <laughs> Can't find his way out of this maze. Well, apparently in San Diego, the city fathers are doing a much better job than they are here locally, huh? Looks that way, I guess. Huh? <laughs> well, shake. Uh, shake, uh, I can't call you shake. Every time I do, my hand goes out. <laughs> Besides, uh, it's too undignified. I'll call you Josie. How is that? That's okay. You like that, huh? Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do, Joes? I'm a waitress. A waitress? Right. Well, oh. they call you Shake? Well. Remind me, never to order a bowl <laughs> of hot soup in your place. <laughs> By the way, where is your place? Around the corner of Viney Street, Hatton's Restaurant is called for the Shish Kebab place. Hatton's Restaurant for Shish Kebab? That's right. Oh, on Vine Street there. It's near the Derby there, isn't it? That's right. It's the only restaurant in Hollywood where I've never been disappointed in the food. Thank no. you for the compliment. Well, it's no compliment. I've never eaten there. <laughs> <laughs> now what have you got to say, Josie? <laughs> but I waited on you. <laughs> well, you may have waited on me, but I never ate it. Huh? <laughs> no, it's a real good restaurant. I've been in there. Yeah. Everything is on a stick, isn't it, huh? Sometimes. Everything is binding, including the proprietor when business is bad. <laughs> what kind of customers do you get at this hash joint? All kind of customer. Some of the most important people from NBC of Hollywood. Really? From NBC they go there? Right. Well, who do you get there? Maybe I know some of these ushers. Well, I have Mr. West, the vice president of the NBC of Hollywood. John West, the vice president? That's really? right. He's my boss, you know. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. He really isn't my boss. I... 
Just thought if I said that, I could get him to put an ashtray in my dressing room. <laughs> you know, I can't get an ashtray in my dressing room. I've been trying for three years. He sent me some ashes, but he won't send me an ashtray. <laughs> I think they were mine, huh? <laughs> well, would you say John West is a, is a good tipper? He's a very nice fellow, and his tip is own is none of nobody else's business. <laughs> Josie, you've answered my question. You don't have to go any further with that. Actually, you might find a $5 bill there someday, and if you do, my guess is he'll have the hole sewed up in his pocket by nightfall. <laughs> he's a pretty thrifty gent, you know. He, he needs every nickel he's got. He's six feet six, you know, and he has to buy exercise clothes. <laughs> he's really a timber topper. What kind of food do you say with your beanery, Josie? What are some of the items on your menu? Well, I'm going to name them in my own language and explain it to you in English. We have Mehshi Malfouf, Kusa Mehshi, Kibbe Baknolia, Laha Mishwi, Kaftan Ruz. Laha Mishwi? <laughs> you know what it I is? I saw her at the Braybank Theater down there. <laughs> that is the Shish Kebab. That's a shish kebab? That's right. Oh, that's that stuff on a stick that's That's binding? right. And what else besides lala? And we have maza and kibbe and eggs. What's that? That's the kibbe cooked with eggs. <laughs> kibbe? What is kibbe? Kibbe is made out of the leg of lamb, ground very fine, and we have the cracked wheat in it. They have it mixed up together, and then they fix it like a meatball, and they stuff it inside with meat, pignolia nuts, Onion, all kind of seasoning, and they bake it in the oven. And then throw it away, I suppose. <laughs> Does John West eat this kind of food? Yes, sir. No wonder he doesn't answer his telephone. <laughs> He's probably doubled up with Tomaine. <laughs> well, I knew very well now. By the way, Josie, uh, are, are you married? No. You're not married? No. Why not? Uh, I'm not in a hurry. Well, being a waitress, I understand that, but why aren't you... <laughs> why aren't you in a hurry, Josie? Don't you know that time is a wasting? Wait You're still a comparably what? young woman, but even so, isn't that your objective, to finally get married? Mm, not now. No? Mm -mm. Could you go for a guy like Dan if he was single? Or if his wife didn't come back from San Diego? Well, it happened he is married. I can't go for him. Well, let's assume that he was single. Would this be approximately well, your Well, that type? would be between me and him, Mr. Groshon. In other words, I think she kind of likes you, Dan. <laughs> you may have some extra senses to take pretty soon. <laughs> Dan, oh boy. Do any of your customers ever get fresh with you? No. No? No. Don't they have a kind of kid around with you, I think? Oh, they kid, but they never get fresh. Oh. I can understand that. No, no customer wants to bite the hand that's feeding them. <laughs> It's pretty easy to poison one of those sticks. <laughs> so what do they do with the old sticks after the meat is gnawed off? Do they, do they use it to put around a lawn to show that new grass has been sown there? <laughs> Did you ever try it? Never try what? I've tried yeah. almost everything. I don't know what you're referring to. So that meat on the stick. Yeah, I tried a meat on the stick. Of course, I was brought up on apple on a stick. And that's entirely different. That's not hot. That was when I had teeth. You could eat that. <laughs> I tried one a few months ago, and all my teeth came out with the apple. <laughs> I settled. I finally put the apple in my mouth and threw the teeth away. <laughs> that isn't really true at all. I have <laughs> one of the finest sets of teeth that money can buy. Now, Dan, <laughs> what am I rattling on here a lot? Nobody's listening to me. It's like somebody explaining kinescope. Now, Dan, let's get back to your senses, sir. Uh, you still have your senses, huh? I'm afraid so. <laughs> you retained your senses while all this palaver was going on? Oh, I've enjoyed it a lot. You have, huh? <laughs> well, you're all alone. For example, <laughs> what kind of questions do you ask when you visit a, a, a house? Well, we like to know who the head of the family is first. Well, suppose the head of the family has two heads. Uh, <laughs> we just want one of them. <laughs> oh, that's a kind of ridiculous question, yes, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> isn't it invariably the woman? Well, that's, uh, the woman says she is. That's one of our little jokes in census work. I see. You may think it's a joke, but at this moment, there are 40 million husbands listening who aren't, aren't even smiling. <laughs> I, you know, I'm curious. I'd like to see how you operate. Now, uh, operate. Now, pretend that I'm a housewife, uh, Dan, and you knock at the door. Now, you fire away. What do you want to know? Well, I'd now, say... Uh, you... Come in. <laughs> Good evening, madam. We're taking a special census in this city, and we'd like to know the names of everyone who reside here in this household, beginning with the head of the family. 
Well, would you mind waiting? Like, go back and put on my kimono? <laughs> Not at all. Make yourself comfortable. Well, I just slipped out of the bath. <laughs> just in time, too, because the water was going out at the same time. <laughs> okay, now what do you want to say? I have a vacuum cleaner, if that's what you want. All we'd like to have is the names of the people who reside here. The, who reside here? That's right, yes. Sir. Well, let's see. There's, uh... Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. You're the lady of the house, yes, yes, yes ma'am. That's true. And remember that, too. <laughs> well, there's, uh, there's Sarah, that's the upstairs maid, and uh, then I have Nettie in the kitchen. No, I'd like to have the I always have Nettie in the kitchen. I can't get her out of the kitchen. <laughs> now, what would you like to know? Uh, we'll start in with the family, the head of the family, last name first, please. Oh. Well, Mark Scroucho. Uh, and middle initial? Julius. And age of last birthday? 39. <laughs> They all say that. <laughs> well, that's the influence of Jack Benny. Right? <laughs> now, and, how do you get uh, paid? Uh, well, what we else do you want to know? You're not going to be oh, nosy at that. Yes, I'd like to know the names of everybody in the family and the names of everybody residing in the house. Well, there's Melinda. That's my seven-and-a-half-year-old daughter. She's a confounded nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> and any other children? No. Well, I have two grown-up children. Uh, did they, they live smart. at home? No, no. They, they left long ago. Any servants resided here? Yes, we. I have Nettie and Sarah. And uh, their last names? Uh, well, Nettie's last name? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. S Sarah's last name is Hatchet. <laughs> Sarah Hatchet. She's from Louisiana. And her uh, age at last birthday? Age at last birthday? I don't know. She's around 45. She's All right. And, uh, you know, when, when she first came with me, she came from Louisiana, and I don't think she knew much about plumbing the way it is up north. <laughs> and I had a plumber at the house one night. And one morning, and he was fixing the uh, dishwashing machine in the kitchen. And there'd been some air in the pipes upstairs in the washroom. And she came to me and she says, Mr. Mark, she says, as long as the plumber's here, why don't you have him go upstairs? She says, there's a bubble in your commode. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get paid for taking the census? Uh, six cents a name. Do you get name. so much a head? Six cents a name is what we get. Six cents a head, huh? Yes, sir. Does that include cabbage or just the people who are living there? Just the people who are living there. You get the, for the name, you get six cents. Six you get cents. the same if the name is Jones or if it's uh, Gabrilowicz? I'm afraid we do. Just six cents any name. Uh -huh. But when you come in after a hard day's work, how does your boss know that you didn't just sit under a tree all day and, and uh, go through the phone book? Oh, they have ways of checking up on us on that. Uh, oh. They send field checkers out and they list all of the... Uh, numbers of the houses on a certain street. Check that against the enumeration book. See whether every house has been enumerated. They're just as suspicious as the tax department, huh? They're more, more so. They, What's they, the biggest day you ever had? Well, down in National City, I enumerated in a district down there. There were large families, 10 to 11 to a family, and my total there was 911 people in one day. At, at six cents a throw? At six cents a throw. <laughs> That's not bad, huh? Sounds like a real old-fashioned American families down there. Oh, they were. What sort of people live in this area? Well, they were all Navy families, Groucho. <laughs> well, that's democracy for you, huh? <laughs> Back in Washington, Sec Secretary Wilson is busy cutting down the armed forces personnel. And out in National City, the Navy's busy making a fool out of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to continue talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. Now, uh... You win more money than our other couples, and you get a chance at the big question later. I presume you know how to play this game, huh? Let's see how much money you can make. You select a general information quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, which question do you want to start with? Ten dollar one? Eighty? Hundred? Sixty. Sixty? Mm -hmm. All right. And what popular card game do you keep score with little pegs on a board? Cribbage. Cribbage. Cribbage is right. That's right. You're on your way. You have $60. Corned beef and cribbage. I had that the other night for dinner. Now what uh, question do you want? 70. 70. Well, congressmen and some other government officials have the privilege of sending certain types of literature through the mails free. What is this privilege called? What is it? Frank. You're Frank. welcome. Yes, that's right. Frank. 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 You've now climbed to one hundred thirty dollars. Now what do you want? Eighty. Eighty. What do you call the black mineral that uranium is obtained from? Mm 
Come on, kids. Oh, you're trouble in that one. Well, you know it after I tell you. It's pitch blend. Oh, <laughs> You still have $130. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Yeah, let's shoot the words. Come on, A $100 one? A mm-hmm. $100 one. The air around us is made up of a number of gases. What gas is present in the greatest amount? Oxygen. 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 No, I'm sorry. It's nitrogen. Everybody gets fooled on that. And you wind up with $130. Well, thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. That's not too bad. Thank you. All right, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, our studio audience selected a physicist, Dr. Eugene Kinsey. His partner is a housewife, Mrs. Sue Neese. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Let's see, you're Sue Yes. Sue Neese, eh? Well, if you're a niece, you can call me Uncle Groucho. Hi. I'd say you were about 20. Is that about right? 22. 22, eh? Ripe old age. Where are you from, Sue? Buffalo, New York. Oh, but you were from Sioux City. There's a couple of bisons out there. <laughs> are you married? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> How did you meet this bounder? On the pike in Long Beach. You met him on a pi- on a fish? <laughs> no, just the pike down oh, Long this Beach. This fellow was a piker? Uh, not exactly. Well, how'd you meet him? Uh, he was in the Navy, and he came up to me last night, and he said, haven't I seen you someplace before? Oh. Real original <laughs> approach, isn't it? Huh? What did you do, send for a cop? No, he didn't know it, but uh, two years before that, we had met, and we went out on a date, and then oh. I left for Chicago, and... Never saw him again until that night. Oh. Then you picked up where you left off, huh? Uh, well, we went out that night, and he left for Japan. Every time he saw you, he left <laughs> for another country. <laughs> yeah. What happened? He, he went to Japan, huh? Mm-hmm. He was in the Navy, and then when he came back, he landed in Seattle. So I got on the bus and went to Seattle, and he met me, and I asked him to marry me. He did, and two days later, we got married. You proposed to him? Mm-hmm. Why did you do that? Uh, uh, I wanted to get married. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would married anybody that came back from Japan, is that it? Not exactly. He was pretty nice. Oh. Well, he may have been a sailor, but apparently you were the one who knows, uh, knows how to tie the knots. <laughs> why, why did you propose to him? Wouldn't he pop the question? I guess he would have if I'd given him a chance, but... You were. You I didn't were, want him to go to Japan or for me to have to go to Chicago. Or I just, as long as I had him, I might just well hook him and get it over with. <laughs> so it's like Romeo and Juliet. It's the same. Thing. Well, you're you're very frank about it, anyhow, Sue. And I, I admire your frankness because most girls they lie about it. They get very coy and resort to subterfuge of all kinds. Dr. Kinsey, eh? That's right, Groucho. Well, let's get one thing clear. I'm not going to make any jokes about your name. Thank you. (laughs) Now, why did you write this book? (laughs) That is interesting. Well, there's no question about that. She skipped that whole thing and just proposed to him, man. She didn't pay any attention to the Kinsey book at all. Are you married? Yes, I am, Groucho, with one child. You're married with one child, eh? Why don't you marry a grown-up like everybody else? <laughs> Where are you from, Ken? Uh, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Gotcha. Huh? In other words, you're a Virginia ham. Is that right? I suppose so, right now. <laughs> Did you read the... Uh, your, is he related to you, this uh, character in Indiana? No, we're not connected in any way. Not even the jawbone with the knee bone? <laughs> Each bone's connected with the jaw bone, and the jaw bone's connected with the jaw bone, and the jaw bone's connected. Can you do a grind, Sue? Sue, can you do a grind? I have two children. Uh... Why do you say he went to Japan after that? 
what is your racket, Doc? Uh, I mean, what is your profession? Uh, uh, I'm a physicist. You are, huh? Well, you don't, yes, see, right, you don't look like you're fizzing much there. <laughs> what is a, a physicist? Uh, what is a, a physicist exactly? Uh, well, a, a oh, physicist... Don't make with joy. <laughs> Physicist studies. Did you ever get on a bender like that and, and start singing a song and you can't control it? Uh, not recently, no. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm going to pot. I've done all the pieces recently, you know. I don't know what's. Oh, happening. you've forgotten about the physicist here. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain it, will you? A uh, physicist studies the, the laws of nature and tries to find out why things happen. I don't get, I don't dig this at all. Would you, could you clear that up a little more? What do you mean why things happen? You mean like a bus rolling down the main highway? You know why well, it's happening. It's got wheels on and somebody put gasoline in the tank. Well, for, for example, suppose, uh, say my wife and I were walking down the street one day and we happen to look into some store window or some display and perhaps see... And don't worry, you will if you're walking down the street with your wife. And maybe we would see an electric light bulb with no uh, wires attached and yet burning. Mm -hmm. Well, then I would worry about why this was happening. Uh, whereas my wife would simply say, my, what a tricky little gadget, and then continue on to the hat shop. <laughs> or the dress shop, eh? Or both. Yeah. <laughs> you got on to your wife pretty fast, didn't you? How long have you been married? I think she's on to me. <laughs> How long have you been married, uh, Doc? Uh, seven years, oh, Groucho. Seven years, huh? And Sue, so you're a, a housewife, huh? Yeah. Pretty fine-looking housewife. Well, just tell us a little about your uh, Hubson, your husband. Uh, what kind of a fellow is he? Oh, he's tall, dark, and handsome, and easygoing, but he does Easy Easygoing, yes. He's easygoing to Japan, most of <laughs> Where is he now? Uh, he's in Tennessee. Oh. <laughs> Certainly a wandering minstrel, this fellow. <laughs> Don't you ever grab a hold of him and have him stay in one spot for any length of time? <laughs> yeah, but... Don't you get lonely for him? You don't have to answer. <laughs> Your silence was most eloquent, huh? Well, what else can you say about him besides the fact that he's on the lamb most of the time? Oh, well, I... Is anybody can... after him? Uh, well, not right now, but a few months ago it seemed like somebody was, eh? We had a hot rod, I guess is what you call it, with real fancy hubcaps on it, and everybody steal them. So we, I guess we put about five sets of hubcaps on that car. So he thought, well, he was going to play detective, and he went downtown. He bought four new hubcaps, twenty-five dollars worth, and a tarpaulin to cover it, cover the car. So he thought that night he would sleep in the car, sit in the car, and anything to get away from you. Right? <laughs> Anyway, he was going to stay in the car and catch the kids that were stealing the hubcaps. Rat pack. Yes, that's what they were. So the next morning he... And what happened? Well, he fell asleep, and when he woke up, the hubcaps and tarpaulin were gone. <laughs> did, did he ever work for the Brink people in Boston? <laughs> After he lost the hubcaps, then he went to Tennessee. <laughs> he was pretty disgusted by that time, huh? No, he went to Seattle before then. Oh, he went to Seattle? Oh. He went to Seattle and Tennessee? Was it? <laughs> he went to Seattle and then he came home and then he went to Tennessee. Oh. When is he coming back again? Is that any idea? <laughs> no. Will he bring you any hubcaps when he comes <laughs> No, but I'll have something waiting for him when he gets back. <laughs> Well, I certainly won't ask you what, huh? <laughs> That's crazy I'm not. Huh? <laughs> uh, Dr. Kinsey, I, I'm curious. Just how would a physicist go about keeping crooks from swiping his hubcap? Well, I would suggest uh, putting the car in a garage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you now see the scientific mind of life. <laughs> Doctor, that's a very logical answer, but uh, let's assume that this fellow hasn't got a garage. Well, then he should bring his problem 
to me, and I think that... And you'd steal a hubcap, huh? <laughs> we could devise some sort of a, a new type of device which would lock the hubcap onto the wheel. I see. How? How would you do that? Well, this would take time. Well, that's, that sounds pretty, uh, pretty good. That's uh, very sensible. Suppose he got a flat tire. He'd have to throw the whole car away, wouldn't he? <laughs> Oh, so. Couldn't take it off. Now, Doc, where do you work, Doc? Uh, I'm in a partnership business with two other physicists, okay. and we are acting as consultant physicists. Uh, we have a, a firm name of Eric, Kinsey, and Miller, Box 361, Downey, California. <laughs> well, and people come in to see you? Yes, that's right. And what do they say? I mean, let's give it an average customer. Well, uh, for client. instance, a uh, manufacturer might come in with uh, some problem. He has some technical problem. With his wife, you mean, at home? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. You solve those kind of problems, too? No, we stay strictly uh, non-domestic. <laughs> well, how do you operate this racket, uh, now, uh, this profession, this business? Now, let's say I have a problem. I come to you. What's the first thing you do? Uh, the first thing we do is listen to your problem very carefully and then sit down and try to evolve an idea which might solve your problem. Well, I've already got the idea. That's why I've got a problem in the first place. <laughs> what kind of ideas do you work on? Uh, we work on all sorts of ideas, usually in the uh, toy, auto accessory, and household goods lines. Mm -hmm. Why don't you invent something that will uh, prevent children from destroying their toys two days after Christmas? Everything in my house is demolished already. Oh, we've done something along this line, Groucho. What do you do, lock up fact. a kid? Uh, one of our items consists of uh, a gadget which holds a set of crowns together and at the same time uh, protects them from breakage. Mm -hmm. no, that's, and you can improve anything, in other words. We right? can improve anything, we think. Well, how about an egg? <laughs> I always well, thought if we had square eggs, they'd stack up much better in the refrigerator. <laughs> now, can you square an egg? We haven't actually tried... I wish you could square a wrap I've got downtown, too. <laughs> you want the hypotenuse while you're squaring things. Now, how would you square an egg? Well, the only thing we've ever done in the egg department was to succeed in scrambling an egg while still inside the shell. Well, you just shake it, don't you? Now, we tried shaking, we tried rotation, and then we tried uh, supersonics, and this did the trick. What'd you do? You put the egg in a plane? Oh, uh, No. <laughs> We used a supersonic sound generator, and thus we were able to shake the egg inside of the shell and thus get a scrambled egg after boiling. Well, uh, you haven't answered my question. Can you square an egg? No. <laughs> well, I see, there are some things you can improve on. However, in this case, it's just as well. When you said no, every chicken in this country heaved a sigh of relief. <laughs> realize that millions of chickens all over the United States had their heads out waiting for your answer? No, I didn't, Roger. Well, what are some of the items you've improved over the years? Uh, for example, could you, you couldn't improve Sue here, could you? I suppose not. We uh, have improved many... Uh, John Wright, you couldn't. Have. One of the things we have is... Uh, a See new how helpless you are on the side of nature. I think you're right, Groucho. I should stick to the books. Well, what are some of the things you've improved? Uh, well, a typical example of this might be a new type of auto compass we have, which allows you to find yourself uh, around in the night in your automobile. No. I know a fellow has been on the freeway for four years. He could use one. <laughs> well, from talking to you, I gather that uh, all physicists do is invent things that are better left uninvented, huh? Don't you ever come up with ordinary things like a cheese sandwich? Well, sure. We've made many improvements around the house, for example. Commonplace things like uh, uh, new types of water faucets, uh, mirror heating devices for the bathroom to keep the mirror from steaming up when you take a bath. It isn't the mirror We've that even... steams up. It's the husband waiting for his wife to get out of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have even uh, done some work on things like uh, ordinary living room lights. Like, well, what have you done for me, for example? Well, for you, we uh, uh, applied 
I don't know. <laughs> what about these lights you were talking about? Well, we, we, we were working on living room lights and oh, household lighting I systems. see. Well, I don't have any lights in my living room. When I turn the switch, nothing happens. Do you think a bright young physicist like you could uh, locate the source of this trouble? Well, have you paid your light bill? <laughs> How would you like it if I came down to your office and poured glue in your slide room? <laughs> You'll admit that you can't improve on Sue. I think you're right. <clears throat> well, we've gabbed long enough now. How would you like to settle down to some serious work like winning some money? Just win more than the other couples and you'll get a chance at the big question later. Feminentis. Stage right. Now, let's see how much money... Oh. Let's see how much money you can make. You selected a uh, dictionary quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, what question do you want to start with? Seventy. Seventy? Is that all right with you, Sue? Yeah. All right, one answer between you. The word digital pertains to what part of the body? The finger. Fingers or toes, either one. You're on your way with $70. Say it again. You're on your way with $70. Once more, there's a hole in the cigar. <laughs> You're on your way with $70. Okay. 80. It's a Swiss cheese I'm smoking here. <laughs> You take an $80 one now? Yes. All right. What do you call a man who makes casks or barrels? A cooper. A cooper is right. That's right. <laughs> you now have $150. Now what do you want? Nine. He Seven knows all the answers. Nine, yeah. <laughs> well, you know some answers too, sir. <laughs> if I had my choice, I'd prefer your answers to him. <laughs> Even with those two fellas he's working with and everything. <laughs> All right, for $90, $90. Synonyms are words of the same meaning. What do you call words of opposite meaning? Antonyms. Antonyms is right. <laughs> you now have $240. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say no. It's yes, Susan. One, 100 Yeah, uh, 100 you're going to go for. It's last chance to beat the other couples. For $100, the emblem of the physician is a winged staff with two serpents and twine. You see it on doctor's cars and on medical buildings. What is this emblem called? Talk it over. Uh, if you don't know, take a guess. Uh, well, it's caduceus. Uh, C-A-D-U-C-E-U-S. I couldn't even see it. How was I supposed to know it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you wind up with $240. You're pretty crooked, Susie, aren't you? <laughs> Well, thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. All right, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we have a young I'm lady who works, we, who works as a cashier in a theater, and her name is Mrs. Catherine Coleman, and her partner is a very special guest. Captain Shaw from the Armed Forces Radio Service told me about him, and I thought we might have him on the show. I'd like you to meet uh, the uh, Captain Joe McConnell. So, folks, could you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the Soda Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Catherine Coleman and Joe McConnell. Uh, Catherine, uh, Kate, I'll call you Katie. Is that what your husband calls you? No, he calls me Baby. Baby. Well, I'll call you Baby, too, huh? <laughs> you can call me Baby, yeah? <laughs> Who knows what'll happen? <laughs> Where are you from, babe? I was born in Mesa, Arizona. But in I Mesa? Came, yes, uh-huh. But I came here when I was 22 months old. Oh, under your own steam? <laughs> you know what a Mesa is? No. You know what a miser is? Yes. <laughs> well, a Mesa is on the desert, you know. It's a kind of a country that goes like this. You ever ask anybody what a spiral staircase is? They always go like this. I'll ask you a puzzle. Do you know... Now, let me think. <laughs> How do you pronounce Y-O-L-K? Y-O-L-K. Yolk? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Now, uh, what is the white of an egg? <laughs> white of an egg? I don't know. I... It's a maze. <laughs> no. Give up? Yes. It was Polk, the President of the United States. <laughs> How do you like that for a riddle, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you 
say you have a Hudson? Uh, Hudson? Uh, a husband, huh? Yes. I'm only a short time in this country. Yeah. What does your husband do for a living? Is he an Arizona cowboy? <laughs> no, he manages a drugstore. Oh, he's a drugstore cowboy, huh? <laughs> How long have you been married, uh, Katarina? Thirteen years. Thirteen? Well, you're a very young-looking girl to be married. Thank you. Do you have any uh, children? Yes, two. Two, huh? Are they as pretty as you? Well, I have a little girl, a six and a half. And they say she resembles me. Oh. Little boy, four and a half. Oh. Well, that's, uh, Joe? That's you, huh? That's Joe, huh? You know what a maser is? Uh, no. No. Well, you won't find out from me, Joe. <laughs> that's a beautiful suit you're wearing, Joe. Who's your tailor? Uh, Uncle Sam. Oh. He's made suits for a lot of people, I know. Huh? Gives you a good price, too, huh? <laughs> Judging from those two bars in your shoulder, you're a captain, is that right? That's right. See how we differ? You have two bars in your shoulder, and I usually have my shoulder on two bars. <laughs> <laughs> well, those wings on your chest, that, that means you're a pilot? Oh, uh, that's right. You're about 30, I'd say, is that right? Uh, 31. 31. Married? Yes. You see, I don't even need you up here. I can tell all the facts just at a glance. Now, how long have you been in the Navy? <laughs> I've been in the Army Air Corps for 13 years. Oh, you're in the uh, Air Corps. That's a long time. How'd you get to be a pilot, Joe? Well, I always wanted to be one, uh, so I requested uh, the Air Corps when I joined the Army. That's unheard of. Usually when a fellow signs up at the Air Force, they shove him in the engineers. Huh? How come they made a mistake in your case? <laughs> well, they didn't. Uh, uh, first, they made me a medic in the infantry. That's more like it. <laughs> My faith in the Army is restored. <laughs> now, Katie, what kind of work did Fenneman say you did? I worked for the drunkard. Oh, many women do, but... Uh... <laughs> Why don't you quit? Who is this bum? Huh? Well, the drunkard is a temperance play and has been running at the theater mart for 21 years. Oh, and I, I knew it wouldn't be steady when you took it, huh? <laughs> and I work as a cashier. Oh. Well, could you tell us the theme of this play? Or? Well, it's a temperance play, and in the first act, uh, it shows the hero as a social drinker, and in the second act, it shows his increased appetite for drink. And in the third act, it shows how he becomes associated with barroom rowdies, and there is a barroom fight, and the fourth act, utter despair. And in the fifth act, he is rehabilitated, restored to society, and is back on lemonade. <laughs> you say he's back on lemonade? Huh? And you call this a happy ending for a play? <laughs> What's he going to do tomorrow night? <laughs> well, what's the public doing while all this debauchery is going on? Are they having DTs? No, they're just sitting there watching and enjoying the play and drinking beer that we've served them. <laughs> While they're getting sober on the stage, they're getting more loaded in the audience. <laughs> well, how do you explain that you teach temperance on the stage and get the audience loaded uh, simultaneously? Well, That's kind of uh, insincere, isn't it? Well, it's actually uh, social drinking because we only allow them three bottles of beer per person, and then we serve them coffee and sandwiches during the oleol. Mm -hmm. And from there they go to the AA? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like... <laughs> too fast for me. What happens in the oleol? Well, in the oleol, that's when our actors and actresses come out upon the stage in an after show and do vaudeville acts. For oh. instance, um, the villain might um, uh, conduct uh, some singing. A schnitzel bank, or, um... I used to sing schnitzel, schnitzel bank, it's pronounced. Oh, pardon me. Schnitzel bank is a kind of an American uh, pronunciation, a schnitzel bank, actually. Uh -huh. You know what schnitzel bank means? No. It's a carpenter's bench. That's what a schnitzel bank is. I used to sing it on the stage. I'll sing you the last stanza of it, because you see the audience is supposed to join in, but they're all sober, so it would be hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> At least most of them. You say, like, uh... Is das nicht ein fetter Frau? Ja, das ist ein fetter Frau. Is das nicht ein Gänsebock? Ja, das ist ein Gänsebock. Is das nicht ein fetter Dog? Ja, das ist ein fetter Dog. Gänsebock und ein fetter Dog. Große Eier, Judenmeier. Schönes Ding in der goldenen Ring. Kommen Kartenwagen raus. Hinten her eine große Schere. Kutzelwagen, eine Kutzelwagen. 
Then everybody sings together. <laughs> the whole audience joins in. I do shaneus, I do shaneus, I do shaneus, schnitzel. I heard there's musicians and one of us is rotten. <laughs> Captain McConnell, that, that singing idea is liable to send you back into the service, isn't it? Or are you still in? I'm still in. Well, let's get back to you. You seem to have a lot of uh, embroidery on there. Do you have much of a home life? I understand pilots are always on the move. Do you live on a base? I uh, own a home in Apple Valley. Apple Valley? Oh, you make your own apple jack up there? <laughs> Did you buy a house there because you're crazy about apples? Uh, no, I didn't buy it. The uh, people there gave it to me. They gave you a house? People of Apple Valley gave you a house. Well, they're all either Pippins or wine saps up there. <laughs> Why did they do that? Was this house haunted? Uh, no, uh, uh, for my services in Korea, I guess. You mean everybody from Korea got a house? Uh, no, uh... You're very modest, Joe. <laughs> and I know who you are, too. I'm sure most people do. You just happen to be one of the greatest heroes in Korea. I see you flinch a little at that, but it's true. See, all real heroes are like that. <laughs> we had one up here a few months ago, Rodriguez. Do you know Rodriguez? I don't know him. But well, you know, he got the Distinguished Service Cross and every, all the fruit that you've got across here. And he was just like you are, you know. He's just as shy and bashful, bashful as though he'd never seen a gun. You have one of the greatest aerial combat records in the history of the United States Air Force. How many enemy planes did you knock off? Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Is that the... <laughs> I feel like such a schlemiel sitting here. Huh? What is the record, uh, Joe? Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, you hold the record, huh? Uh, for Korea, yeah. Oh. Well, you're sort of the Casey Stengel of Korea, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> so what was your closest call during your tour of duty in Korea? You must have had some close ones if you were up there most of the time. I'll, uh... Yeah, a couple, but uh, I think uh, the closest was uh, on my eighth MiG. Uh, I was with a wingman, and 12 of them sneaked in behind me. And, and, uh, while what do you I was, mean a wind? What's a wingman? A uh, wingman. Oh, wingman. wingman. He, no. Uh, another pilot flying another F-86. Oh. And he's, he clears the rear, and uh, the leader looks around for enemy aircraft. And, uh, well... Uh, he, uh, 12 of them, one of them sneaked in on him anyway. <laughs> and uh, I was feeling pretty good. I was working on my ninth and uh, very smugly. And then uh, uh, he called out uh, 12 MiGs coming in. So I took a look and started uh, scissoring a couple and figured I had it hacked when one of them sneaked in uh, to about 800 feet and put a 37 through my engine. Well, uh, how many engines do you have on that? Uh, one. Just one. Huh? And <laughs> it's not good. You should never go up with less than four engines. I'd want about 11 engines if I were. So, so? Then, I, then I just coasted out to uh, to the uh, sea and uh, brought, brought down a bit. parachute? You hit the, hit oh, yeah. the silk? Yeah, and then I, I bailed out. That's my stuff, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, helicopter picked me up out of the water oh, in less nope. than three minutes, by the way. And, uh, they saved a lot of lives over there, the helicopter. Well, they sure did. They now, what did body of water them. did you come down in? Uh, the uh, Yellow Sea. Oh, that's practically the ocean, huh? Well, it... Uh, It'll do until the ocean comes <laughs> along. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you a question. Uh, did you ever get scared up there? Uh, well, uh, the most scared I ever was was uh, on uh, my last day, in fact. Uh, I had a wingman, uh, just one... Uh, we didn't have anybody else around. We'd gotten split up, and we saw uh, 30 MiGs. So uh, we uh, jumped into them, and uh, I got one on the initial pass, and then uh, got pretty rough. And then... Uh, I can't understand I got, that. <laughs> <laughs> I got another one off my wingman's tail, and then, uh, well, we had to run. That was the first time I ever had to run. There were 28 of them chasing you? Uh, yeah. Huh? And, uh, were they as fast as your plane? Uh... Yeah, just about, depending. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> depending on what? Well, uh, whether you were climbing or what. Oh. <laughs> they were, 
Well, we're, like s- we're certainly glad to have you back here, Joe. We, which is certainly the understatement of the year. We can't afford to lose any fellows like you. I think you've done your bit now. Eh? If I'd known you were that much of a hero, I wouldn't have inflicted schnitzel on you. <laughs> Are you planning on staying in the service, Joe? Uh, yes. Well, you're not going to do any more combat. You've done your bit now, haven't you? Well, there... Teach the other boys, huh? That's what I'm doing now. Yeah, oh, well, I should be a pretty good teacher, I imagine. Huh? Well, Katie, let's talk some more about your work. How many times have you seen the drunken? About 200 times. You're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> Don't you ever weary of it? No, I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh-huh. Do you remember any of the lines in it? Maybe we could do a short scene, huh? You haven't got a flat bottle on your back. Have you there, Joe? Huh? Well, uh, I'm not an actress, but... Um... Well, I'm not a drunkard, but we can manage. <laughs> I do know a few lines. If, uh, you? Would you care to play the part of the villain? I think you'd make a nice villain. Well, I've never been anything else. <laughs> I don't know why I should switch now. Well, uh, there's one thing I particularly like. You've got to stand up. And you'll have to have a cape. Perhaps, a cape? Uh-huh. Could you use this for a cape? Oh, yes, I certainly uh-huh. could. All right. Uh, and, Maybe uh, I ought to play the heroine. <laughs> and you have to hide behind the cape. You see, you're ashamed. <laughs> now, mm. now, look at, now, Who wouldn't be ashamed in this outfit? <laughs> Curse you, Jack Dalton. How <laughs> oh, am I authentic? Well, come on, denounce me, will you? I know. Wretch, have you not now proved yourself a slanderer? I'm to effect your own vile purposes. But no... (laughs) (laughs) I'll get her in the end. I don't know which end, but I'll get her. Did they bang the latchet of her shoes? Uh, You uh, are not worthy to unloose. I've always wanted to take her in an apple orchard, eh? If I don't get thrown out of the Screen Actors Guild, it won't be your fault. <laughs> well, it's been a thrill talking to you two, and Joe, if I could perform some skullduggery in the quiz here tonight, you'll go out of here with more loaded than the hero in Catherine's play. <laughs> we, we aim to be impartial here, but uh, if an eyebrow can mean anything... <laughs> Let's see how you make out in the quiz. Remember, if you win more than the other couples, you'll get a chance at the big money later. All right, let's see how much money you can make. You selected the animal kingdom. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what question do you want to start with? Ten, twenty, hundred? Number seven. Number seven. What is a mythical animal that had a single horn growing from its forehead? Uh, What is it? The mythical animal. Mythical animal. Mythical animal. A single horn. Oh, God. Taurus, Capricorn, no. Oh, I don't know. Come on, take a guess. Capricorn. Huh? Oh, gee, you're so close. It's unicorn. Oh. Well. I couldn't tip you off on that, Joe. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> the other contestants are watching out there. <laughs> <laughs> They're just as crooked as I am. Now which one? Do you know? Okay. Number eight. Number eight. What do you call the bees that don't do any work? The drone. The drone. Drone is right. Drone. Well, you're on your way now with $80. Now what? Nine. Ninety. What kind of an animal was responsible for the murders in the Rue Morgue? What kind of an animal? Oh, a, a big... Gorilla? Gorilla? Gorilla! You now have $170. That's a dirty trick, but this guy brought down 16 mix. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. $100. $100. What do they call the breed of wild dogs that prey upon the sheep of Australia? They're very mm. vicious. Something like wolves. She wolves? Werewolves? Werewolves? No. 
I guess I gave you a bum stare. It's Dingo's. Oh, wouldn't I know? And you wind up with one hundred and seventy dollars. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Thank dealers. Thank you. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> And that means that the physicist and his partner with $240 in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. George, uh, before we bring the people up here again, uh, I want to ask you a question. I've heard that people are buying Groucho special used cars just to get my picture from the sticker. Is, is this true? <laughs> well, it's not quite true, Groucho. No, they're just smart buyers. You see, uh, these people know that the uh, Groucho special sticker is the DeSoto Plymouth dealer's way of uh, saying that here is my best buy and my hottest bargain. You see, so many uh, people are buying these wonderful new Plymouths and the magnificent new DeSoto automatic that, uh, well, they're trading in lots of wonderful cars for them. Uh, to get these cars, they're trading in actually literally hundreds of fine used cars. Top quality, top condition, and top value cars. So uh, I guess that's why that every DeSoto Plymouth dealer has the finest used cars in town, and his Groucho specials are the best buys in town. That's, that's true, George, and this picture of me isn't doing them any harm either. <laughs> well, I, I had no idea I was so attractive. You know, I'm practically <laughs> beautiful on here. I have never quite looked at it that way, but... Uh... Kiss me, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> Will you play Narcissus, please? <laughs> what well, I was getting at, Groucho, was that uh, the dealer takes in all these wonderful cars in trade for the new Plymouths and new DeSotos, then he inspects them carefully and picks only the very best as his Groucho specials with that sticker on them. Mm -hmm. and, so, when you, and when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Well, I had a little more I was going to say. Well, go right ahead. If you'd like me to. Yes, I, I, right. I'm crazy about it. I, I can tell you are. I have to make a living as well as the next fellow. <laughs> so don't the next miss fellow happens to be you. Right? <laughs> so don't miss out on this great opportunity. Tomorrow, at the very latest, look over your DeSoto Plymouth dealer's stock of fine used cars. Watch for the few hottest bargains and best buys is Groucho Special used cars. The Groucho Special Sticker, a sign of the finest used car buy in town. Yes, and as I said before, when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. And now, Groucho, I'd like you to meet the winning couple once again. I have met them. Yes, well, I want you to meet them again. The oh. physicist and his partner all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. Well, here's a chance to get your husband back from Tennessee. $2,500, huh? Well... Here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience now. Here it is. Clara Bow and Buddy Rogers were on the first motion picture to win an Academy Award. For $2,500, what was this picture? What's the answer you two have decided upon? Ben hair. No. The answer is wings. wings. So that means the big question next week will be worth three thousand dollars. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz, George? Well, they won two hundred and forty dollars in the quiz. Well, thanks and good luck, and congratulations to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America and the United States. <laughs> Sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $3,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't save the checkup of your windshield wipers for a rainy day. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. 
This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Thank you all for showing up, and we hope you all had a good time. Those who didn't, if you'll send me $12 in cash, just to defray the cost of mailing, I'll send you each a life-size photograph of the Bank of America. Good night, all, and a Happy New Year. <laughs>